So now I am uh, going to talk about some of the core marketing concepts that have been very important for a student to understand. So first, uh, needs. Needs, the basic human requirements such as uh, requirement for food, air, water, clothing and shelter, these are the needs. Then wants, specific objects that might satisfy the need. For example, I am I'm feeling thirsty. For, uh, for To quench my thirst, I may have many options available. But what I want to, what, uh, what specific product, for example, I may want a glass of water, I may glass of juice, I may want a glass of uh, soft drinks, etc. So there, are, there can be many options to satisfy that need. So uh, if I specify that I need a glass of water or a, a bottle of water, then it means I want a bottle of water. So that becomes a want. Then demand is when those wants for specific products, they are backed by the ability to pay. That I want a bottle of water to quench my thirst, bottle of water, demand, when I also have the ability to pay for that bottled water. So uh, demand is basically those specific products then uh, which are backed by the ability to pay. So ability to pay now becomes a very important for a marketer to understand that uh, whether the customer is going to accept that product on the basis of the price which the which the market is going to uh, decide about that product so these are the type of needs uh, which need to be understood by a marketing student stated needs stated needs real needs unstated needs delight then secret so i'm briefly going to talk about these type of needs stated needs the customer wants an inexpensive car so stated needs i want a car but that car should, should not be expensive that is a stated need i stated i want a car which is uh, relatively cheaper than the other cars available in the market the real needs the customer wants a car whose operating cost not initial price is low these are the real needs they the customer sometimes wants that though the initial price may be may not be low but yes its operating cost that should be low for example uh, many customers can prefer uh, the costly diesel cars instead of uh, petrol cars because the uh, price of the diesel in india is going is cheaper than uh, relatively cheaper than the uh, petrol prices that unstated needs the customer expects good service from the dealer these are unstated means i am not going to state it while purchasing uh, uh, but i I, w I expect that um, I need good services from the dealers, and these services may be uh, in the in uh, after sale services also, the services while the machine breakdowns or or the services uh, in our for for example the pick up and drop facilities etc. These can be the services that are unstated many times. Then delight needs the customer would like the dealer to include an onboard GPS system. These are some of the features which are, which are not been expected by the, uh, by the <coughs> customer. But yes, if those are available, the, the customer feels delighted. Then secret needs, the customer wants friends to see him or her as a savvy customers. Means uh, the customer is purchasing that uh, product or services and uh, uh, and uh, at the same time they also want that they should be they should get attention of the uh, they should get attention from the other persons around him or her for example he wants to be acknowledged he want uh, to be acknowledged by the crowd that uh, the person is using that product and he feels proud he has sense of pride, uh, sense of pride um, while using that product. That is a secret need and these are going not to be stated. So these are some of the needs that needs to be understood by the marketer when they are going to specifically serve those needs to the customers. So in this slide I am going to talk about some of the core marketing concepts which are been, uh, which the marketer is going to perform. Uh, target markets, positioning and segmentation. So normally we also call it STP, STP, 
means segmentation, targeted and positioning. But first of all, it uh, uh, T comes, that is targeting, then uh, positioning, then segmentation. So to be uh, very precise, it should be TPS regarding the STP, but STP is a uh, normally in uh, commonly used abbreviations for targeting, positioning, and segmentation. But it uh, it might be uh, we can uh, remember it by TPS also. Not everyone likes the same serial restaurant or university or movie. Marketers therefore identify distinct segments. Distinct segments. Uh, uh, these segments should be distinct. The distinct segments means they are being uh, different from the other segments of buyers by identifying demographic, then psychographic, and behavioral differences between them. So if we uh, try to distinguish the segment of buyers through their demographic characteristics, their psychographic characteristics, or their behavioral differences, then the, uh, we can have a different segment of the market. Then they decide which segments present the greatest opportunities. Then, for example, if we are going to have uh, segment A, B, C, and these are been uh, different, uh, these have been different through their demographic characteristics, psychographic and behavioral uh, characteristics, then we can identify whether A is going to be profitable, B is going to be profitable, or uh, C is going to be more profit, not profitable, which is more attractive, which, should we, which we should serve. And for each of these target markets, the firm develops a market offering. Now, for example, I have decided to uh, choose B. Then for this target market, I'm going to design my market offering. Market offering means the product and services, all those 10 entities which are going to be offered. And it positions in the target minds as delivering some key benefits. Now, these offerings, these are going to uh, have some characteristics that is going to be placed, uh, that are going to be perceived by the customers as distinguished. Means they are going to be different from the other offerings in the market. For example, Volvo develops its cars for the buyer to whom safety is a major concern, positioning them as the safest car. He uh, Volvo is going to develop cars for the marketer, for the markets, uh, who, which includes those segment of customers which for which the safety is, a, is an important concern. And then they are going to uh, position their product as the safest car. Similarly, Porsche targets buyers who seek pleasure and excitement in driving and want to make a statement about their wheels. So here the target market buyers, they are going to be somewhat different from the which Volvo are going to uh, serve. So this is in this way we are going to do this process of segmentation, uh, targeting, positioning and segment. Then value propositions, these are also some of the core marketing concepts. Value proposition, a set of benefits that satisfy those needs. So we have the uh, we ad we have identified the needs and sometimes the needs, uh, they are not only one. They, there is a set of needs, there is a collection of different needs. For example, I want safety also, I, I want uh, safety of the car also, I want uh, the car to be cheaper also, I uh, want car to be fuel efficient also, I want car to be uh, powerful also. So all those set of benefits that are going to uh, that are going to be um, acknowledged by the marketer that is the value proposition. Then keeping into mind the value proposition, uh, we are going to have offerings. And offerings they are the combination of products, services, information, and experience. So all it is a combination of what are we are going to produce the product, what are going to be the services associated associated with it, what is going to the information that are going to be communicated, and what are going to be the experiences. So these are basically the offerings. Then brands, an offering from a known source, and we when uh, that source is going to be known, that who is which company is going to provide that, then it becomes those are the brands. So a brand name such as Apple carries many different kind of association in the minds of the in the people's mind that may make up its image creative, innovative, 
easy to use, fun, cool, iPod, iPhone and iPad to name just a few. All companies strive to build a brand image with as many as strong, favorable and unique brand associations as possible. So how many associations are you are going to have? Favorable, the plus you have with your associated with your brand, the minuses then can be uh, that are there associated with the brand etc and how they are going to offer this uh, how these associations are going to be associated with the offerings you are going to provide in the core marketing concepts we have marketing channels also and the marketing channels they are going to basically communicate distribute and provide service to the customer so to reach a target uh, market the marketer uses three kinds of marketing channels communication channel deliver and receive messages from the target buyers and include newspapers, magazines, radio, television, mail, telephone, smartphones, billboards, posters, flyers, CDs, audio tapes and the internet. The distribution channels help display, sell or deliver the physical products or services to the buyer or the user and to carry out transactions with potential buyers, the market also use service channels that include warehouses, Transportation companies, banks and insurance companies, these are the service channels which are going to uh, help the marketer in uh, delivering the product and services. So communication, distribution and service, these are some of the important uh, functions that are going to, uh, important channels that are going to be managed by the marketer. Then paid media. The TV magazine display ads, paid uh, search and sponsorships, where we are going to pay for our communications. Then owned media, a company or brand brochure, website, blog, Facebook page or Twitter account, which is owned by the uh, marketer, means they are going to uh, they are going to be responsible for their uh, delivery of content. Then earned media. Earn media, they are going to earn, earn with the time. For example, the word of mouth, buzz or viral, viral marketing. These are the important uh, things in the earn media. <coughs> Paid media allows marketers to show their ad or brand for a fee. They are going to uh, provide fee. They are going to, they are going to uh, pay the fees for that. Then own media are the communication uh, marketers actually own means owned by the marketer and the earned media are streams in which consumers the press or other outsiders voluntarily communicate something about the brand and they are not going to pay them but they become the communicators of the they become communicators of the market marketer and uh, in place of the marketer the stakeholders those stakeholders they communicate the positive aspect of the product to the to the other customers then impressions occur when consumers view a communication. If, if I'm viewing this communication, if any person is viewing this communication from the marketer in any form, then it becomes impression. Engagement, the extent of customer's attention and active involvement with the communication. How much that customer is actively involved in with that communication means they are uh, watching it uh, with their curiosity they are communicating they are evaluating those communication then becomes that becomes then it is engagement value value it is a combination of quality quality service and price we call it qsp the customer uh, value tried so we call it QSP, right? And it is a customer value tried means the quality is important, the service is important, and the price, the price of the product is important, right? Now satisfaction, a person's judgment of a product's perceived performance in relationship to the expectations. So there are customer expectations. What are what I am going to expect from a marketer, and if I am going to receive those communicate those expectations and uh, and those performances they are matching with the expectations then I am satisfied expectation is but 
customer expects from a product. Yes, I am purchasing uh, this car. I have some expectations. And if those expectations, for example, I expect that car is going to be fuel efficient and it is going to give me uh, um, mileage of 20 kilometers per liter. And if the car is delivering more than 20, then I'm feeling delighted. But even if it is giving me 20 kilometers per liter, then I'm satisfied. But if, if, if I'm receiving less than 20 kilometers, then it is below the uh, expectation, the performance is below the expectation, then I may feel dissatisfied with the product. So the buyer chooses the offering he or she perceives to deliver the most value Mind it, the customer is not looking for the product or service uh, in isolation. He is looking for the value, the bundle, the bundle of monetary and non-monetary benefits which are going to be provided by the product. Sometimes intangible or uh, tangible benefits also. It also includes some emotional benefits also. And uh, so the value is the sum of the tangible and intangible benefits and the cost. So what I'm going to uh, give, uh, what I'm going to pay, and that payment may be uh, monetary, non-monetary in form, or it may be tangible or in in intangible form, or it may be many times emotional, sometimes emotional. Emotional costs are also there, and uh, cost of the efforts to buy that product can also be there. And if the performance falls short of expectation, the customer is disappointed. So if performance is less than expectations the person disappointed dissatisfied customer if it is equal to the expectation the customer is satisfied and if it is more than then the person the customer feels the customer feels delighted in the supply chain, in the co-marketing concepts, uh, supply chain is also important, very important. So supply, supply chain is basically a channel stretching from raw materials to components to finished products carried to the final buyers. So it starts with the raw materials, then farmers, they are going to, uh, for example, for produce by of the, produce in the farm, farm, then the farmers, they are going to collect that produce then it it, it is going to uh, transfer to the manufacturer who is going to change the form and then alternative trading and uh, the coffee sold to the retail channels and here here the example of coffee is given for example uh, the ethiopian farmers grow and harvest coffee beans and then the farmers sell the beans to the fair trade cooperative, then the coffee is washed, dried and packed for shipment, then alternative trading organizations transport uh, beans to the development of, uh, to the development world and the coffee is sold to directly to the or via the retail channels, coffee is sold to the customers. So each company in the chain captures only a certain percentage of total value generated by the supply chain value delivery system. So this well this supply chain has value and each company and every stakeholder in this 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 they are going to have some portion so when a company acquires competitors or expands upstream or downstream it aims to capture high percentage of supply chain value so for example if we here are the raw materials then it is going here is the manufacturer and here is the retail channels and these retail channels then they are going to deliver to the customers so if the manufacturer is now going to perform these activities this is a uh, it means we are going to have a backward integration and if we are going to, if a manufacturer is going to perform these activities, then it is a forward integration. And competition, competition, although actual 
and potential rival offerings and substitutes a buyer might consider so competitor all those companies they are been competitor who are if they are actually existing or they may exist in the future also you know, rival and they are providing the offering and rival for a product for the product of a marketer and it also it is also a substitute for a buyer then that product or uh, becomes a competition for the marketer so let me discuss this slide uh, again the competition is all the actual and potential rival uh, offerings and substitutes a buyer might consider uh, so it, two words are important the actual which are there in the markets which are present in the market now and the potential which can present in the market in the coming time in the near future those and they are uh, give them the offerings which are rival which are uh, means which are going to be uh, which are going to ruin the marketer's product and it is also it act, uh, and those products which are also the substitutes of your product that also include in the competition the marketing environment includes task environment and the broad environment so marketer must pay close attention to the trends and development in these and adjust their marketing strategies as needed that that, that are very important that we are going to so whatever the marketing strategies are needed that the marketing strategies are going to be designed in that form only new marketing opportunities are constantly emerging that await the right marketing survey survey and ingenuity task environment the actors engaged in producing distributing and promoting the offering that are the task environment and the broad environment includes the demographic environment economic environment socio cultural environment natural environment technological environment and political and legal environment that are going to influence the in one form or the other